What's up? Welcome back to my channel and uh, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to do a monthly recap. This is going to be kind of a bi-monthly recap because I did not do a recap last month because I had a wedding to go to and do makeup for and be in and then I just had other crap going on. So let's just, let's get caught up, shall we? Starting the day off right with lipstick on my teeth. That is a good, that's a good sign. All right, like I have so much crap in front of me. It's ridiculous because this is like the two months worth of stuff. I mean, not all of it's makeup. Some of it is a good decent portion of it is but let's start off with the little guys let's start off with an indie brand that i bought from this is actually my first indie perfume that i've ever bought or for first indie fragrance it's called posy the brand is and i have a couple of things here i got the creature comforts i got like their tiny little vial it's uh, adorable this is like part of their halloween collection and they sent me a sample of frosted which is another one of their fragrances and that is in this little thing i haven't really used this one a whole lot because i've been using this one so much it's almost smells like it's almost like food and i know that sounds kind of weird but it, it does have a very food like smell it's a very sweet smell it's described as a sweet smell that has like notes of pumpkin and vanilla let's see it's described as a pastry shop filled with sugar cookies pumpkin pie apple tarts homemade marshmallows and then the sticky toffee pudding it almost gives it a i don't want to say soapy smell but because that that doesn't really that other note that they've thrown in there on top of all the sweet stuff but for the most part it just smells like really sweet it's definitely like an indie perfume. I'm not going to sit here and say it's like your Dolce & Gabbana perfume you've had since college, but you know, it's just different. It's a very different kind of smell. And honestly, I kind of want to try more stuff from the brand because it's really unique. Like not everybody's going to smell like that, you know, and it seems like everybody kind of wears the same fragrances everywhere you go. Not this one. This is going to be different. Deodorant Pacifica deodorant wipes. I freaking love these things. I got these when I was planning on traveling. So I was like, I don't know what the crap's gonna happen. Do I need deodorant wipes? I mean, I don't know if they even have a Target in Kentucky. I'm just kidding. I just got them because I thought it would be a good idea. And then I don't know, I use it every once in a while. Like I don't use these all the time because that would get really expensive really fast. But if I'm like in a hurry to get out of the door in the morning, which has happened a couple of times since I've had these, I'll use these then put my deodorant on top of them Oh my God, it, it works like freaking wonders. I love these things. I love them so much and they smell so freaking good. Highly recommend these. Just love them. Pacifica, again, coconut milk cream to foam face wash. I don't know if you've tried their sea foam and kale face wash, but this is a little bit different because it is more creamy and it has like a foamy consistency, a really strange foamy consistency. But I like it because it makes me feel like my face is getting clean, like when I can like soap it up really well. I always use this as like the double cleanse, like I take my makeup off first, then I wash my face with this. And the thing I like about this is, as compared to the sea foam and kale, is the fact that this doesn't seem to dry my face out as much as the other one. The other one didn't really dry it out that much, but this one doesn't really dry it out at all. Like I can wash my face and then not even put moisturizer on after that. And that's fine like my face doesn't get super dry and tight and i have pretty dry skin so yeah i like this stuff next thing i'm going to talk about shaving cream now normally i would not like discuss shaving cream because i'm like who cares but i just like this so much i have to mention it it's the kiss my face moisture shave green tea and shampoo i don't know it's good though it's definitely not like a foamy shaving cream it's like cream cream a, sh a cream shaving cream it doesn't dry my skin out and it like provides a really good barrier because there's a, like a lot of oil in it you know it provides a good barrier between my legs and the razor so it doesn't like i don't know it doesn't irritate my skin i really really love that stuff but yeah anyway next thing i'm going to talk about a couple of different setting sprays i got i've got this for the first time i'd never tried this mario badescu facial spray that people freaked out about for a while they have a bunch of different colors or like green pink purple. I needed like a travel setting spray and I didn't have a travel bottle to put my other setting spray in. So I got this and I really, really like it. Like I like the rose water and glycerin spray from the heritage store that I've used for a while, but this stuff is like less sticky. It's less lotion like because the other stuff is supposed to be like a lotion. This stuff is just less sticky than that. It doesn't dry my skin out. If anything, I like putting it on before I put on foundation and it kind of prevents some of my drier foundations from oxidizing on my skin, so. I also ended up repurchasing this Milani Make It Last. I wanted to use it at my friend's wedding because I did her makeup along with three or 
for other people's makeup. And I just, I love the way this makes makeup look. I ended up buying it for that wedding specifically because I just love the way it makes your makeup look. And no regrets. Something else I'm going to talk about because I don't think, like I think I mentioned this on my Instagram stories, but I don't think I've actually talked about it on my channel, is the Flower Beauty Warrior Lash or Lash Warrior Mascara. This is an interesting mascara. I like the formula. The packaging's beautiful, let's be real. But the wand. Um, I just have a lot of mixed feelings about it. I think the wand's just weird. It seems a bit unnecessarily big. Like how many people have big enough eyelashes or long enough eyelashes or enough lid space for this to not bonk you right on the face? Like it just seems too big. It doesn't make any sense to me. Not only is it too big, but compared to how big the wand is around, like how big in diameter it is, the the, the bristles are short. I, I, and then they're long in some places, short in others. I've experimented with this. I'm almost actually out of this at this point and I just I mean I like it I can make it work but I don't know if I'll repurchase it just because of that wand and how weird and awkward it is to use another thing I bought that I had actually never tried this is the NYX studio perfect photo loving primer bought this specifically for my friend's wedding because she likes pore filling primers honestly I don't really like to use silicones unless I absolutely have to but she wanted a pore filling primer and I got this one because I thought it, like I've never been a huge fan of the Smashbox one. I thought this was supposed to be a dupe for that and then I started comparing ingredients and thought, maybe it's not, maybe it's not supposed to be a dupe for that. So I bought this before we did like a test run of her makeup and I've also tried the Professional. I do not like the Benefit Professional. So tried this, didn't use it you know, for her wedding and I really like it. The only thing I do recommend is if you do use silicone primers of any kind, just really push them into your face. Rub your hand around on them until it's dry before, don't just, don't just rub it on and then let it dry because if you're letting something dry on the surface of your skin, essentially what you're doing is leaving a very, 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 very thin layer of that product and it is gonna ball up because it is silica and it's basically plastic. <laughs> it's just gonna ball up under your foundation or whatever else you put on top of it. I like it though, I like it. All right, so I have a few lipsticks from the month. Two of them are from the Sephora birthday gift. I got the Bite Beauty little set. I think there was a different set that you could get. I can't remember what it was. I think it was like an Ola Henriksen or some skincare set or something. But I opted for the lipsticks because I've only ever tried one Bite Beauty lipstick and it was from Marshalls and I ended up like letting my kid play with it and like finger paint with it. Couple of things. I like this one. I like the stick. This is the shade Glossé. It's um, a matte, cr matte, creme lip crayon. matte cream lip crayon. I like this one, okay? I like the formula of it. It doesn't slide around too much. It doesn't dry my lips out. I don't need a lip liner with it. I like the way it looks. I like how I like the finish. It's not like super matte, but it's also not like super creamy like the amuse-bouche. So let me get into the amuse-bouche. And here's why I don't think I'll ever buy another Bite Beauty amuse-bouche lipstick. I have on Libra right now, okay? And <laughs> silly me, if only I had tried this one before I bought this one, I probably never would have bought this one. This is the one that came with the Sephora set, obviously. It's just like that mauve purple color for those of you who have received yours. It is the same formula as this one. This is Libra from their limited edition Zodiac collection that they've had running all year long. This is the first one that I've bought. I bought it because my kid's a Libra. I don't really get into astrology, but um, aside from that, I just wanted to have the Libra because I thought it would be cool, you know, my kid's a Libra and I like warm brown lipstick, so I got the warm brown lipstick. I didn't use a lip liner because I don't really have anything that matches it. I don't wanna have to use a lip liner if I spend $28 on a bullet lipstick. I'm sorry, I just don't. Like, I wish I had known the formula of this first. Like, I like how moisturizing it is. I like how it feels on my lips. It actually feels like I have a lip balm on, which I, I, I enjoy that aspect of it, but it just bleeds around the edges of my lips. I have like lines around my lips because I'm, I'm human and it will go into those lines and it just smears around and it, it takes a lot to get it to an opaque coat. If you can, I don't know, see like around the edges, you can kind of see where it might not be so opaque. That's kind of how it looks when you first start to put it on. You have to build it up, build it up and really fuss with it to get it like a good, a good coat, a good coat of paint. 
You have to you have to get it right to get it to look right. I mean, I don't know. I don't regret my purchase because it's a Libra and I wanted it anyway and I like the feeling of the tube, but I don't I don't know. I just don't think I like the Amuse Bouche formula. There. I said it. All right. Next lip product. I do like this formula. The shade, on the other hand, I'm still kind of on the fence about because it is a lot more sparkly than I thought it would be. When I bought this, I didn't know it was going to be sparkly at all. And this is the new NYX lipstick. This is in the shade Grind from their new Machinist collection. It's the only one of the lipsticks I bought because the others I didn't really have much of an interest in. And this one, of course, warm brown, but it looks more orangey bronze in person, again, than I thought it was going to. I thought it was just going to be like a straight up warm brown lipstick but it is sparkly. Like I will see if you can see the sparkles in that. And once you start putting it on your lips, you can really see the individual chunks of glitter, which I don't necessarily hate. Like I just haven't really made my mind up about that one yet. I like the formula though. I'm gonna say that it stays put. It's waxy enough and not too creamy, but it's not dry to the point that it's gonna make my lips look crackly. I don't know. I'm just, I've, I've always been a huge fan of NYX's bullet lipstick formulas. I've tried a few of their bullet lipstick formulas and I, I, I really like all the ones I've tried. It's one of my favorites. The only thing is I hate NYX's bullet lipstick packaging, not because of the way it looks, but because of the way it feels. It feels so cheap and lightweight. I just feel like it's gonna break. And then for instance, one of them will just kind of roll up and down the whole time you try to use it, which is a really big shame because the formula is amazing. So along that same vein, here is the grind palette. This is the only one that I got. I'm thinking about getting the steam palette. I have no interest whatsoever in the ignite palette, but this was the only one that caught my eye when they first teased it. And oh my God, I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> like it really is pretty. It was, I'm not going to lie. It was a straight up impulse buy. I saw it on Instagram. They had just, just announced the product and I was like, mine. To be perfectly honest at this point in time, I really do like it. I am going to have a review that I'm going to post about it. But at this point, I like it. I think, I know $25 sounds like a lot, but this packaging just feels so much nicer than some of their other palettes packaging that I've tried. It's so nice. The mirror's really nice, which I know is really kind of hard to see. And just, I don't know, everything about this packaging is really nice. The, the shadows are nice. They're not like typical dried NYX shadows. They really, the mattes especially, I love them. Stay tuned for, for the full review because there will be one. Almost done here, almost done, I promise. This is, it's like me playing catch up for the past like two months, trying to like recap everything. So, as a lot of you may have heard, there was a bit of a controversy surrounding one of our favorite YouTube channels and favorite influencers that we all know and love and have probably been watching for a very long time if you're on YouTube. If you're new to YouTube, you may only know her as the CEO of Makeup Geek, Marlena, or Marlena. There was a big fuss about influencers and how much money they make per, per video, which honestly, I don't think most of us were that surprised about how much they make per video. The only thing that annoyed the crap out of me was that they all were like, oh my God, you're talking about me, even though you didn't even mention my name. The defensiveness was, was really off-putting. Like, I... Personally, I don't I, like we see how much money they have. We see their cars and their mansions and their their designer everything. Like, do 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 they really think that we didn't know how much they probably made? That whole thing got really really weird. But I had had like a cart full of makeup geek stuff for a while that I kind of returned to every once in a while and be like, oh, I'm not gonna buy it. But when all that happened, I was like, it's all gonna sell out. It's all gonna sell out because she's it's relevant right now. It's what people are talking about. Anything that I really, really, really want, I'm going to have to go ahead and order. So I did. And I got four different eyeshadows and then a blush and a highlight. And it was just stuff that I'd kind of been eyeing for a while. Again, maybe they're rebranding. I don't know. I got really paranoid about never being able to get these shades. This is the important stuff. Let's talk about the blush first. This is Puppy Love. Um, I mean, people have talked about, and I'd always wanted to try one of their blushes, but I've been looking for like a light pinky mauve neutral kind of blush shade for a while and I thought this was going to be it but I don't know if you can see it is a lot more red than what it looks like here at least on my skin it's 
really pigmented. I'm not super, super fond of extremely pigmented blushes just because I do have pretty fair skin. So if I put too much on, it's woof, can't do that. I mean, I like it, whatever you purchase it, probably not. Now the eyeshadows, I'm a little bit more excited about that I got. And these were eyeshadows that I thought were pretty unique. I don't have anything like them in my collection. Well, one of them I used to, but I, I got rid of the palette that I had a shade that was similar to this. This is the grunge shade. This is what I wanted the Naked Smoky to have in it. Like a legit matte gray shade, like charcoal gray that wasn't super patchy or hard to blend. And this is it. I love it. I'm not sure why it's called grunge, but I really, really love it. It's a very, it's almost brown. It's almost like a very, 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 very cool toned brown to the point that it looks gray. I've actually used that as like a one shadow kind of look and it worked. Another one of the matte shadows I got was Apple Spice, which is a really unique, almost, I wanna say burnt orange, but it's like a terracotta shade. It's like a very, yeah, it's almost dead dead on like terracotta. I mean, it has like a coral ring to it as well, but it's a super unique eyeshadow. I really like the formula. It blends so well. Like some of their eyeshadows and some of their mattes in particular, I've not been impressed with in the past because some of them have just been skippy and dry and not very blendable. But that one, love it. Same with Grunge. I really, really like both of those. This one, on the other hand, I could probably leave. This is called Steampunk and I thought it was going to be pretty cool because it has like some dimension to it. It's almost like a duochrome but it's definitely not. It just is brown with kind of black in it but you can see it right there. Like it's pretty, you know. I got it because I thought hmm this will be a good one shadow look. Shadow. One shadow look shadow. You can kind of see the blue it left behind. Kind of weird, huh? It's, it's like almost like it has a, a black base with brown flakes. I don't know. It's kind of cool. It's just really dry, kind of crumbly. I mean, the problem with shadows like that is the fact that once you put it on your eye, if you start to blend it at all, then all that brown flake is going to fall off and you're going to be left with that weird hazy blue color. So you have to be kind of careful with that shade. So it's not one of the sh shadows that I would put all over my lid and then blend out the edges. Can't do it. Not a one shadow look shadow like I had originally planned for. I'm just, I'm kind of stumped on that one right now. But another one that I got and that I actually do like, this is Pixie Dust. It's really cool. I've been wanting like a yellowy green shade that's just on its own for a while. And I do like this one. Let's see if I can. I like it. Um, it's unique enough, you know, it's not like boring, but at the same time, it's not crazy where I can't just use it as an inner corner highlight if I want to do something like that. Or I've been wearing it like all over my lid. So I really like that too. The stars of that purchase, I think were the apple spice and grunge. I really, really like both of those shades. For the last thing I got from them, one of their highlighters, because people, people were making a huge fuss about them a while back on social media when they first came out and I always wanted Electrify and the reason I always wanted Electrify was because I've always wanted a yellow highlight like a yellow toned highlight akin to Aura in the Venus palette by Lime Crime and I thought this was going to be that like I thought this looks just like it. it looked like it on the internet and even when I hold them side by side in person this looks pretty similar to Aura but the way that this comes off on my face is more gold now I can swatch it for you here. You can see right there, it's already looking pretty gold. I mean, I've used it a whole lot um, for the, over, the past, over the course of the past month. Absolutely love the packaging. It's my favorite highlighter packaging, I think, that I own next to all the, the Becca flying saucer ones. I still think this is just so pretty. I love the color. It's almost like a gunmetal, but I don't know. I really love, and I know they're rebranding, but I hope they don't get rid of this packaging because it's super, super pretty. It feels really nice. The mirror is really high quality. I know people are complaining about Makeup Geek becoming like not the affordable brand that they had originally pigeonholed themselves into, but I think that this was worth the $18 because I think it's a really, I think it's packaged really well. I think the formula is really nice. I think it's definitely worth, it's, it's definitely at that price point. At least this is. Um, some of their other stuff, I don't know, but 
I haven't tried everything that they have to offer. I haven't tried any of their lip products before. But yeah, I, I gave in. I bought Makeup Geek partially because of the hype, partially because of the fact that I was afraid everything was going to sell out or they were going out of business. I don't know. <laughs> It was weird. And that is it. All right, you all. Anyway, um, stay tuned for my review of the Grind palette. Also stay tuned for a project pan update because that is coming and I've got everything organized for that as well as an empties video. This has all been a long time coming, but again, I'm just trying to like do some housekeeping here on my channel. But anyway, um, thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber and you want to be, please do that on the way out. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I am Smacy. I've been more active on Instagram lately, so feel free to follow me there. I am not on Twitter. I do have an old Twitter account that's mostly about my dog's farts. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, it's weird. I, I've just never been very active on Twitter, but if you want to follow me on Instagram, go ahead and do that. If you want to be a subscriber here, please do, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.